Night Attack is coming to SF Sketch Fest. Look up SF Sketch Fest on Google. Uh, join us uh, whenever it is. Our opening song is called 80,000. It's from Stephen Cogswell. Get it at otfy.com. That's A-W-T-F-Y dot com slash 80. Playing the Super Mario theme on our booth. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. And you would think that that would be the awesomest thing in the entire fucking world, but you already spent all of my money on a bunch of replicas. Worship Napoleon the Queen, for she is the source of all life. Uh, Obey, go sector southwest, south by southwest, 25 degrees, turn left, right, right, one, two, collect pollen, collect pollen, protect the queen, protect the queen, return. Psalm 99. 80,000, oh, eight, five, be back, the If you're on the East Coast, it's like, fuck you, asshole! Get in here to work! Where's my stromboli? Hey, bro, where's the best stromboli, man? Oh, give yeah. me that stromboli. I want a stromboli. Let's go bowling with a stromboli, bro. What is stromboli? Meatballs in. It's an inside-out pizza. You're wrong, Brian. It's not an inside-out pizza. It's an, e an inside-out sauce. It's it's five it's five it was five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, uh, hell's yeah! Uh, uh, oh you beautiful uh, bastards! Uh, oh you uh, demon uh, hordes uh, of the uh, internet! It's Tuesday uh, night uh, and we are live from the newly minted Diamond Club Studios, deep in the heart of the Seven Acres Wood, located smack dab right there at the teeny tiniest edge of Austin city limits. I'm Brian Brushwood, live in studio, joined as always by my BFF from OAK, only he's L-I-V-E. Here in A-U-S, it's J-R-Y. Ah! Only abbreviations from now on, just that's all we do now. Uh, uh, okay, BB. <laughs> <laughs> Are, oh, okay, nope, is, is, is he, the bit died just like that? That's how far we got. How you doing, Holy man? Shit. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm here in Austin, uh, and uh, boy, did I bring a crew with me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce to you our other guest, Andrew Heaton. Hello. I'm really happy to be back. Uh, you're goddamn right. Uh, I got uh, applause from a couple of people in the room. Thanks, room. <laughs> We're allowed to have people in the room. It's wonderful. And of course... The invisible wife, Bonnie Brushwood. Hello. Hey uh, Bonnie, you've been uh, you've been you've been crafting an ancient uh, what oh, world? An I, undiscovered I land. Have, uh, we we, we got to figure land. out the canon on this. Look, all right, look. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Here we go. I, I I don't. I'm not on camera. But... So 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 come That's on camera. Fine. Come That's on a, camera. Oh. Can you so, come so, on camera? Right, look, you got kids. Kids want to have parties. You want to have a theme for a party. Kid says, make <laughs> it dinosaur themed. Here's the question. Is it a time travel? <laughs> is it a time travel themed party? No, yeah, no, no, this Very is, this or this or is it an undiscovered world party? Yeah, and, and so so Bonnie is going. They're, they're with dinosaurs the, either way. Right. Yeah, yeah. For for audio listeners, it, it looks like she's got a safari hat on, a safari helmet. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She, she's British imperialist from the forehead up, but the cape says Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is true. She's gonna make it if you like it or not. <laughs> I, I do like the fact that, that you are also. I, I feel like the hat belongs on Andrew. Can we see what it looks oh, like? Yeah. Looks like it totally on Andrew. Does. All right, so so Andrew. Consummate Eaton, I, I always look like like someone is very angry that I set up a Raj office in oh their country. Oh my god! Yeah, exactly. You look like you're gonna hunt. Oh, oh, look my at this god. guy! Oh so so so, so, so listen, we were all given permission to be here by your king before we unseated him. <laughs> So it's too good. I, I think it's too good. Too much of a okay. thing. Right, real thing. Time out. We're going to talk real talk here. Andrew has been living rent free at this <laughs> property for half of a year. He's been here from the beginning. He is a he's a literal fixture of the seven acre Schwood. Yeah. I've not asked him for any payment. No. Until now. Uh -oh. <laughs> this motherfucker is yeah. going to work a gig. This award winning, this man who on his mantle has an Emmy award that yeah. he stole from John Stossel. Uh -huh. Given, given, but... given, gifted, gifted, <laughs> much yeah. like the British Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. We, we, look, we, we 
you know, noticed that the, the, the Emmy was not being properly utilized by its owner. We took it and organized it better for the benefit of all. <laughs> but none, the sun never sets on libertarianism, let's face it. <laughs> but the important thing is this dude on Friday is going to come role play for all of the children who are about to enter a magical lost world. He is going to stamp their passports with little dinosaur stamps. Fully in character, Tweed and all, bringing the Adventurers Club Explorer spirit to our party. So I, the, I think this is the perfect gig for me because I get to talk about dinosaurs, <laughs> British people, uh, time travel, all that stuff. All right, how's it gonna How's it gonna sound? Let's uh, let, let's practice. Hello, a little bit. Uh, welcome to base camp. Uh, are you familiar with dinosaurs? You should know that their vision's based on movement. Uh, and then just keep going through that kind of... Uh, so, uh, do you have a favorite dinosaur? Is there, do, do, would you be bothered if a Dilophosaurus spit on you? <laughs> <laughs> and just, just go through that. And then, and then like, you ask the kids, Quite, did you know most of us raptors are actually about as big as a chicken? <laughs> they're, they're like very angry chickens. Uh, all right, uh, understood. But this is Night Attack. If there were the blue version of the character that you cannot do for the kids, yeah, how let's, would say, that let's go? say much like a certain Disney Plus original, one of the kids happened to be fifty years old, but also was in the same class as our seven-year-old. Uh, 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 what's the material you might try on somebody that's wait, age wait, appropriate? Wait. There might be a, a single divorcee mom that comes. Uh -oh. Through, oh. You know. so, all right, so, all right, all right, so, all right. So, all right. Here we go. Wait, here hold we go, on. I just want to make sure this. I'm trying to seduce one of your friends. By yes. using blue material about dinosaurs. Yeah, yes. right. Yes. I God am down for that. Yes. Okay. Okay. So all, right. all the kids are passed. All the kids are passed. Now all of a sudden, and like she's kind of like she's doing all like she's brushing hair away. Like, she's giving you, know, you the signals. Maybe even like I go, you know, like biting her finger. All the like, kids are showing up with their like kid passports. She pulls out her actual passport that verifies that she's definitely yeah. forty-seven and right? has changed That's her name. Recently. I always check the. I always check to make sure That's, the woman's yeah. over forty. Yeah, I think. And also, by the way, we're going to age it down. Let's go 32. <laughs> Whoa, cradle robber, whatever. Right? No, no I, okay, what? just shooting from the hip here. I think, like, once the kids clever, uh, ha have you been to the dinosaur pit? Because I think you'll find life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> then I just I just turned it into a conversation about whether brontosaurus had nipples or not, and I that <laughs> just and greases the whole thing. Deal is closed. <laughs> Listen, I think this is the part we take our shirts off. I think you've done a great job of seducing you. I uh, you know the, the accent of the hat. I what more do you need from me? Quick side jag on this, and I think we've talked about this maybe on the Weird Things podcast. But did did you know that the publisher of Penthouse Magazine once ran a science journal magazine? The, what? Guccione, yeah. Uh, yeah, Guccione yeah. Bob Guccione, did, yeah. who did Penthouse, did Omni, and those worlds blended when me, in seventh grade, read an article for a science project. I was like, well, you have to go find a science, a Scientific American, boring, this other one, or whatever. Omni magazine, those are usually short and easy. And then uh, open up to a double two-page spread of dinosaurs. How did they fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's, giant, it's like he's tricking children. It's giant the, graphic uh, oil painting illustrations of nothing but 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 uh, Diplodong Docus is doing it. Uh, if 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 if, if Bryce is able to find it, it would be amazing. Diplodong. Wait, so is, is is that like the is that like the '60s version of like, hey kids, do you know what's terrific? Cigarettes. Like, is it like that where they're trying no, to get them into penthouse? No, that's education. Or? Who else is trying to educate the youth on how dinosaurs fuck? The goddamn <laughs> Patreon hero, Bob Guccione <laughs> Jr. That's also, him. Also, I like to salute, salute to you, King. The, this shit was clickbait before clickbait was a thing. It's like dinosaurs. How did they mate? Turns out one on top of the other doing it dino style. <laughs> exactly how yeah. you would expect. And they, did they I mean, like, all right, all right, real, real quick. Do you know how a stegosaurus fucks? Yeah, man. What, you gonna lay on those spikes? I assume it makes very awkward direct no. eye contact. No, no. And, and, and then as it as it gets older, it closes its eyes. They begin and then cries a lot. They begin with foreplay. They call it steganining. You gotta turn around and face each other, lay down in opposite directions. And then if you're really into it, you don't even want to know where those ball tails go. That's right. Uh, well, now, now I've got a question. Go ahead. 
Is it about Stegosaurus fucking? Yes, if because not, I because don't want to I, I go ahead and answer. It they is. end in a, mis- a position they call <laughs> emissionary position. It's the, the zero. They got to they gotta get gonna it I was going to say, it was so weird that God had to send a comment. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I just feel like there's What's a funny is you said comment, but I heard comment like it was a YouTube video. <laughs> God, God is shitting. Too weird. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> So I feel like those oil paintings still exist someplace and that <gasps> they should be somewhere here on the compound. So that is, is the Indiana yeah. Jones yes. of pictures if of dinosaurs can fucking. Find the original oil paintings of dinosaurs fucking from Omni Magazine. Right, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Email Bonnie us. gets the hat back <laughs> and you have to say it belongs in a museum. <laughs> And we get to say that if you want to support this show, head on over to patreon.com. Wait, I, 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 I'm so sorry. It sounded like you were trying to segue into a very important part of the show, and I don't blame you for doing that, but it looked an awful lot like Bryce had found some of the legendary photos. Those oh dinosaurs are fucking... And to be oh fair, my God. To be fair, there are a lot of illustrations of dinosaurs having sex. Yes. <laughs> can, can I ask you guys a, a, no, a question? Bryce has found a lot of illustrations. What, what does it say about me that I'm very aroused looking at these? Is that, is that good? I mean, it am means I the only that one you here? should have the hat back. <laughs> Everybody should join us over at <laughs> patreon.com slash night attack where you can keep the show loud, live, and independent and uh, thriving, surviving, and possibly even growing. Much like a baby dinosaur that was just injected in the emissionary position. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Look, if you want to be a part of this show, and hey, look, I flew my ass out to Austin so I could be here. And spoiler alert, I'm going to be here for the next three weeks. What? Because uh, we're going to record three episodes. <laughs> but if you would like that to be more often, if you would like me to be in the studio, if you like this episode more than the episode where I'm on Skype, then head on over there right now because that will make this happen. I will fly out here more often. We will do more shows live in studio because, look, this is the first time I have ever done a show live in the Seven Acre Schwood. And I'm telling you right now, I like it. Goddamn right, dude. We, we had a green room and everything. But of course, if you are a new pledger or if you up your pledge, we like to say up your enthusiasm by shouting out one of your names randomly in a little segment we like to call... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Night Attack new Patreon name chant corner hour. An hour of oh my gosh, I don't know what this person's up to, but I'd like to imagine that he's having this exact fantasy in his mind. It's in, deep in a steamy jungle forest, and he's trudging through. There are no mammals. Maybe there are a couple of tiny mammals around, but he doesn't make care because he's a giant, big reptilian, possibly a bird. I don't know. Science ain't decided. The fact is, he's got tiny arms, but that don't matter because he's got a big old dong, and he's looking for some <laughs> big old lizard puss to crush. <laughs> Where are you, lady lizards? This yeah, not- get him. <laughs> okay, all right, good. <laughs> I have I have a watching fetish, so I'm glad somebody's watching. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> have you yeah. seen? Have you I'm seen another dinosaur? <laughs> no, I know. But- I'm into this shit. <laughs> right, but I'm into a heterosexual kind of dinosaur thing. I need a lady puss. No, I know. Yeah, no, yeah. go find it. Oh, there oh. she is. Oh, damn. Get it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, now I like to have one dinosaur and maybe one exploratory human watch while I crush lizard puss. I'm an oh. ankylosaurus and I just enjoy watching. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh, whatever. You'll do. Just tell me you're, just keep saying, I'm a human. I'm a human. I'm a human. Okay, oh, great. I'm, I'm a, a human. It doesn't right. have to be real. You don't even have to mean it, but yeah, I have no, to Yeah, no, in my role play, I am a human. I'm still a dinosaur. <laughs> All Are right, you listen. done yet? All I'm, right. I'm kind of, you know, got a busy schedule. I got some oh. other dinosaurs. Right. From I agree with her. Problem. I've got a deflating right now. All right, listen. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to ask me my name while we're fucking because we got a photographer from Omni Magazine who's going to take a photo and then later have it made, made it to an oil painting. Here we go. Well, here, let me just get these spikes out of the way. It's so awkward. Oh, 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 stick a Stop being a like, bro. Oh, I'm a human. I'm a human and I'm watching you. I got it. Okay. Ask me my name. Ask me my name. Ask me my name. What is your name? My name is 
David Collins. Oh, there's no echo. I like David it better. I can't come unless there's an echo. Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Hold on. Let me get in the mood. Let me get. Wait, Whoa. wait, wait. Oh, okay. What? What? Oh, go ahead. What My is your name, name is David Collins. I, you know what? It's fucked up. I can't do it. I can't. You oh, know what? Uh, maybe right. tonight's just not the night. <laughs> My name is David Collins. <laughs> Don't oh, feel bad. It happens to all dinosaurs at some okay. point. You have what a big meal with pterodactyls. I came all the way out here for nothing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> by the way, what? fuck you, prude. <laughs> Sound effects are still a little out of my range with this new mixer. Oh, <laughs> it's a new board. It's, it's a, a new board. I almost found it. I almost found it. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you, David Collins, Collins and thank Collins, you to Collins, everybody Collins. who uh, uh, supports us right here on patreoncom deck <laughs> But also, we'd like to shout out the folks who watch us live every single Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on twitchtv attack And we'd like to shout out the folks who give us bits, who give us subscriptions on this one minute. In fact, I'd like to tell you a story, Brian. I see you. Uh, oh, yeah, well, I, of course you do. You know why? Because Skills Cat is our bit boss with 6,000 bits. I, I don't want to make a real Dan Wally out of the whole situation, though. Well, I mean, when I think about it, Dan Wally, what I really assume is that you're going to rena goo the situation. I'm you sorry. Know? Is, is, is that coming out? I, I know you're Sicilian. Is that, is that like a, a, a phrase from your home? My dad was rena goo during the war. Well, I mean, look. When my father came back from the war, he said, I love the Lenina. Yeah, wait, but you're talking about Big Jim 5. Get out of here. That's offensive. What I mean is that uh, Cranium <laughs> Boy was the only person that flew the The only true one who survived. Yeah. yeah, no, he stole a Crimson Zamboni and, and drove it very slowly away. Fuck some dinosaurs. We along can the agree way. with that, but at the blue front, who stood up? Uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Thank you, Captain Fubar. Uh, <laughs> and also, I want to give a shout out to our. The bit boss. That is going to be Skills Cat, currently at 7,500 7, bits. 7,500 Thank you so much. Bits. Followed by Big Jim 5 with. 6,000 bits. Thank you so much. And Rock and Roll Martian. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Goddamn right. Uh, a lot of people, yeah, look, I spent 20 years lying that magic was real. And then I would lie <laughs> that magic was fake because I would claim that I wasn't doing real miracles on stage when what I was really doing was actual miracles. And the source of all those miracles is the only true source of magic on this goddamn planet. It's the one who brings joy, happiness, and, 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 and swag to all the good little children in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us for reels live from the North Pole, give it up for Santa, Santa Claus! Claus! Yes, Santa! Santa! Yeehaw! <laughs> now, uh, ho, ho, ho! Sa Sa Santa! Santa! Say, uh, Santa, you, 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 you seem uh, like, uh, man, I hate to say it, but you seem like somebody so happy you just had a divorce or something. No, Mrs. Claus is still, she's here. <laughs> <laughs> but well, what I mean, I mean, let, 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 for the audio listeners, let me just please describe that Santa not only is in his traditional beard and hat, but also it is. Uh, a very Kid Rockian <laughs> cowboy hat with no, a... No, I'm not Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I could tell that confusion happens uh, okay, quite a bit. Uh, then, 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 uh, apologies. A, 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 a Charlie Daniels cowboy hat with a feather... Yeah, with a feather yeah, yeah. atop it, and then some aviator shades. Uh, uh, Santa, is this your country phase? Well, you know, I, I may seem all cosmopolitan traveling the world as I do, but I tell you what, you scratch Santa's skin and I ooze country like possum gravy. <laughs> I was unfamiliar with the phrase possum gravy, but I'm glad to have heard it now. Now, Santa, I would assume this is a very busy time of the year for you. I'm so thrilled that you're able to make time to give us a call. What is the number one pressing concern that you're having to deal with? Well, I tell you what, here in 2019, the North Pole... <laughs> Seems to be short for politics. No, because despite the Arctic economy being way up, 
and Arctic unemployment employment being way down. Santa Claus is on the verge of being impeached by the do-nothing elves. <laughs> oh, oh, my, my God. God. Wow, wow. Swamped it's by... the witch hunt. <laughs> Swamped by politics. It seems that our Santa is right now. Uh, I mean, uh, I... I, I Honestly, we we on this uh, podcast try to steer away from politics, but if I can I ask you, if, if I can ask you, like like what is the next moment where you will know whether or not there is any challenge to your Santa Claus position? Well, I I don't know. I mean, this witch hunt it just keeps going on and on and on, but. I guess upon introspection, being that I'm 1,629 years old and can fly with the help of my reindeer familiars and have a long white wizard's beard, I guess I am edging into witchy territory. But, oh, wait. Um, so when you say wish hunt, you don't mean that you're being unfairly <laughs> accused of things. You mean you're literally being accused of being a witch. Yes, it's unconstitutional. <laughs> This is why I sent Rudolph to the Ukraine to dig up dirt on the Easter Bunny. <laughs> so, so, okay, is, is the idea here that you want to distract attention to the focus on the real problem of the Easter Bunny? Or, 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 or uh, what, 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 describe the for me your strategy. Easter Bunny is the real problem. He's corrupt. <laughs> He's weird. He breaks Wait. into people's houses. So, well, Santa, I heard you're in cahoots with the Krampus. Is that true? With, with the who? The Krampus? Huh? Oh, never mind. The, uh, the, 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 the evil German horned man that beats children with sticks? Yes, that is right. I like those people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, the one uh, who... Right, sorry, sorry. Say, Santa, go ahead. Uh, who? who <laughs> oh, never mind then. Uh, uh, Bryce, we have letters. For... Old, I get confused. <laughs> San, uh, Bryce, we have letters from Santa. They've been sent in this entire year. Right. Uh, they've been building up as they always do here on the Night Attack podcast. Can you please read our first letter from Santa? Sure. Okay. This is uh, from a good little boy or girl named Dr. Arby. Dr. Arby asks Dear Santa, can cats have a little salami? Well, Dr. Ar Arby, have you been a good boy this year? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm terrified that this got misinterpreted because I know there's a meme of, yeah. of, of, of people search for the phrase, can cats have a little salami? Which they can. Oh, yeah. Which they can. Right, but yeah. it does well, yeah, trouble me. It does trouble me that Santa, currently under investigation in what he calls a witch hunt, immediately asked, I don't know, comma, have you been a good little boy all or right, girl? All right, all right, all right, all right. I thought the Dr. Army was asking the question, but you were reading the. Mm. Listen, Dr. Togo, um, <laughs> if you've got a cat that enjoys the salty, spicy taste of ground swine stuffed inside a well-rinsed animal colon, then by all means, <laughs> let your cat manja some salami. But take heed. It was Christmas, 1954. My sturdy team of flying reindeer and I were a well-oiled toy delivering machine. Eleven heads of steam zooming lickety-split across the subcontinent of India. We're so ahead of schedule, I thought I'd reward my steeds with a well-deserved treat and pluck ten delicious salami sticks from my haversack. <laughs> and lo, how lustily did those horned beasts gobble up those zesty piquant links. But as we descended upon steamy coal cutter, I heard a rumbling and a gurgling and oh, such a clatter that I then did feel a warm, smelly splatter as my beard was pelted by reindeer fudge batter. <laughs> uh, can, can we just end the show right there? I mean, oh <laughs> reindeer my God. bladder. Oh, oh my God. Amazing. Number one, number one. Santa, I don't give a fuck who's investigating you. That's a Christmas classic that will be repeated for years to come. Bryce, do we have another email? We do. All right, here's, a, here's an email from a good little boy or girl. Hey, boss. This year for Christmas, I would like some books on Java, SQL, and cooking. I know me failing last semester puts me down on the nice list, but I need some guidance on IT and how to become a professor. P.S. The cooking books are for myself and my mental health with love. Tillenbox. Also... How does the U.S. government view the slave labor laws for the Arctic? Is it international waters or international ice? Uh, Y'all greedy, first of all. Yes, <laughs> I think we can kill three birds with one Red Rider AR-14 by getting you 
Indonesian cooking, volume two, because that's Java, that's <laughs> and that's cooking in one single tantalizing book. <laughs> All right, yeah, nailed it. Good enough for me. Nailed it. Yeah, Congratulations Bryce, we have another letter from yeah. a good boy or girl. We've got one here from a good little boy or girl named Little J. Little J asks very simply, "Where are all the Baby Yoda toys?" Baby Yoda's in. Little J, more like Lil Effort. Have you tried <laughs> looking at a toy store? <laughs> Actually, here's a little pro tip for you, Little J. I'm telling this to all my elves. If any child asks for a baby Yoda, just pull some of those troll dolls out of the bargain bin and paint them green. Yeah. Children ain't too sophisticated. See, I save a few bucks. This, this, this is a life hack straight from the that man is, himself. Dude. That is, mm -hmm. that is, and that is, that is somebody who knows something. He is a a, a goddamn uh, a, a leader in his field. He has a Brett Michaels hat. He knows what is going on. You, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Jim Henson Studios just takes things out of dollar bins and paints them green. That's the whole <laughs> thing. That's how they keep their overhead low. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, actually, the system. That, that might be too close for comfort uh, to being yeah, accurate. I mean, exactly. I mean, Kermit's just a sock. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> He's <You're> right. right. <laughs> Bryce. All right. Uh, we've got an email here from a good little boy named Old John Smokey. Oh, my oh, goodness. We wow. haven't heard from Old John wow. Smokey wow. in a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They old, write, old, Dear old John Santa, Smokey. Dear Santa, I could use some new wooden spoons. They make a great sound that's totally unique from metal spoons. My buddy Lou Rod Jenkins borrowed them and left them out in the snow. They don't play right no more. Thanks, Santa. Well, old John Smokey, let me drop a little science on you. They sound different because one is made out of wood and the other one is made out of metal. <laughs> Oh, see, oh, see, he's getting the oh, gift of education. That's that smart. Yeah. Way, he's getting yeah. out in front of it. Like, 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 uh, you don't even need the spoons because he's already cut his hair to pay for the watch band. Yeah, <laughs> teach a man to spoon, he'll spoon forever. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. you'll have to kill him. Give a man yeah, a fish, because... he can eat it with a spoon. Exactly. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I hope I hope you're not asking for drug paraphernalia. <laughs> wait, hold on, wait, wait. Uh, uh, Santa, are you worried that you would contribute to the opioid epidemic? Not not all that worried, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, well, well, hold on. I, 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 forgive me, Santa. I know normally you're very forthright, but I, I'm detecting a little bit of resistance to this line of questioning. Is there something you want to share with us about maybe some of your backstory? I'm 1,708 years old. I've done a few drugs in my day. <laughs> Is that right? Okay. I will also note for, for, for audio listeners that the wine stains on the upper <laughs> lip of Santa Claus are becoming more and more pronounced as this segment goes on. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it just now occurs to me that we hope they're wine stains. God, yeah, I hope so. Right. Just Bryce. drinking a, a good old mug full of holiday Yuletide blood. <laughs> We've got a letter here from Reindeer a good Reindeer blood. <laughs> <laughs> from I mean, a coffee did mug. Did you say mug. that? <laughs> Here's a letter from a good little boy named Sun Glow Steve. Dear Santa, all I want this Christmas is for Schwid not to kill Captain Murphy. Or himself, now that I think about it, one more year. But if he's going to kill someone on camera anyway, who should it be? I love you and your luxurious beard. Oh, please, oh, please kill me. <laughs> Get me out of my misery. Apparently, I get thrown drunk every year I, I do this show because I always forget how painful it is. Oh, Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, please, for the See, love of God, tell right. me we have another All letter. Right. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> this is a letter. This is a letter from a good little boy named Fun Nugget. Uh, they write, like I say, in the past, I was a troublemaker, but now, Santa, I would say when I was a little girl, I wasn't like a typical normal child. I always got into the stupidest things, egged people's houses, vandalized people's cars, egged 7-Eleven stores big time. Now that I've gotten older and wiser, I can recognize right from wrong. And I've been good this year because I have set myself goals in life and caused less chaos. Not really a question, but... <laughs> yeah, so, so so what do you do when somebody well, writes it, you it, a it, it sounds like an appeal. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, yep, let, me, yep, let, me, yep. let, me, let me add a little postscript to that yeah. and just ask you, Santa, on her behalf, what does she deserve? Mm. Um, 
I don't know. I, I kind of dozed off during that one. I took, <laughs> kind of took a long winter's nap. It, well, it, it sounded like this is somebody who... Uh, this is a reformed troublemaker. Yeah, but, yeah. but uh, can, can, can we talk about, like, from a Freudian perspective, just the obsession with, like... It seemed like eggs showed up an awful lot during during all those troubles. Huh. Yeah, there's a lot of eggs, Santa. A lot of uh, eggs, Santa. What do you say? Now you're bringing up that Easter Bunny again. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we talk about the Easter Bunny? Like, do you, do you guys run into each other casually? Like, what's it like when the two of you bump into each other? I stick them. I cut them. <laughs> oh, just... Uh, just... <laughs> One right in the ribs? Where 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 do you stick them? Do you got it? Anywhere in the body. Anywhere. Okay. I go for the eyes. <laughs> so wait, hold on, wait. You are saying right now exclusively on the Night Attack podcast <laughs> that Santa Claus, when he sees the Easter Bunny on sight, he's trying to stab him in the eyes. You should have seen what I did to the tooth fairy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Santa, Santa Claus. Santa Claus, oh. thank you so much. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Christmas <laughs> cheer, the likes of which we have not seen all year. Uh, Br- Bryce, do we have any other urgent missives? We, we've got one last one here from a good little boy named Thomas. Uh, hi, Santa. I hope you're doing well. I was just wondering if it wouldn't be easier if you dumped the toys and other gifts and just gave gift cards. The kids can send letters asking for whatever, and you just drop them a gift card and let them worry about getting the toy themselves. Seems yes. legit, Santa. Yeah. Look, Santa, uh, uh, we've been friends for a long time, but I really hope you answer this question correctly. Back in the good old days, I could give the children a wooden train or a horse, a jack in the box, even a Pokemon, and their faces would light up and glow with the spirit of Old World Christmas. <laughs> now, all the kids are wanting the, the, the gift cards for the Target and the Amazon and the Olive Garden where they <laughs> face fuck you with salad. Don't you people see that it's all a plot by the Red Chinese and the Italians to spear the, steal the spirit of Christmas? I have an urge to just cut the line almost. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, my gosh. Boy. Santa. Save Christmas from the Red Chinese. Be- and the be- best of right, luck to you, Santa. Santa. Good to hear. Santa. Let's hope that witch hunt doesn't ever end. <laughs> Thank you very much. We Santa. all conditionally <laughs> love... <laughs> Yet strategically distance ourselves from saying I, I so hope that some young man or young woman who's a foreign exchange student in the United States tuned in to learn about American culture and how Christmas works and watch that and is mystified as to what Christmas is about. Oh. Uh, well, thank you so much, Santa, for joining us. I guess at this point we moved into a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to uh, do a little bit of Diamond Time. Le- well, what do you say we move on into Diamond Time, folks? Diamond Time is where you can shout out your project right here on this show. Just go ahead and head on into uh, reddit.com slash diamond club. Slash r slash diamond club. Diamond club dot reddit.com. Of course, you'll see a big old fat sticky post right up at the top where you can shout out your project. And we take the top three upvoted and we make them super famous right here live on the show. For example, we have here from Real Bad Weave. <clears throat> Ritual Misery Productions at Diamond Club TV present the 5th Annual Diamond Club New Year's Eve Streamathon. We're ringing in the new year every time zone with 27 hours, 27 hours Mm -hmm. of games, live podcasts, talk shows, and more. We're also raising money through Extra Life to benefit the children... Take two (laughs) to benefit the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Uh, Come have some fun and help a great cause. The streamathon starts at 4.30 a.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. UTC on December 31st at twitch.tv slash DC streamathon. Holy crap. That's a lot of time. They're doing a lot. That is a ton. And they have a lot uh, of people involved. It's a, it's going to be a lot of a lot of your favorite Diamond Club streamers. Uh, by the up. way, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, is there any way? And and we're we're going to try to make this work. But uh, uh, Bryce, I know that we're going to be airing an episode in the middle of that. Is there any way that we can put a little uh, bug on that? Like just to like make sure that everybody still knows that uh, stuff is raising money. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. But there we go. We will be a part of it. Thank you so much to Ritual Misery who put uh, this on for the last couple of years. And uh, again, this year, thank you. 
Uh, Drunken Centurion writes, Hi, Diamond Club. Live from Building 7 is a weekly Microsoft news podcast paid by two Microsoft employees and longtime Diamond Club members, myself and my husband. It's a joyous romp into product updates, research, and saucy tales of cloud compute and more. Check out uh, Building7.live or look up Live from Building 7 on your podcast app of choice. We love you forever. Thank you very much, Drunken Centurion. And of course, Neshcom, one Bryce Castillo pops in saying, Mike TV has got a new album out right now. Hesitation Cuts is a 45-track epic album. Find it at get <clears throat> find it at getsetgola.bandcap.com. Major music stores, streaming services. We love Mike, don't we? Of course we do. And we'll see him on Night Attack soon. That's right. Which, uh, you know, sound great thanks to the fact that Bryce now runs the goddamn Death Star with all those those yeah. buttons and lights and dials. That's right. Uh, yeah, everybody, make sure you check it out. We, uh, uh, it, I think it just came out this week, so uh, uh, go and support Mike. A uh, few people have uh, donated more of their talent to this program than Mike TV. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think it outpaces Brian and I. <laughs> Like I, th th that man has done every single uh, movie draft that we've asked every time we've ever wanted him out here. Uh, he has never said no. Please, if you are listening to my voice, buy Mike TV's hesitation cuts right now. Support the people that care. And I guarantee you it is an amazing album. Hells yeah. But you know what everybody really cares about is who's winning in the movie draft minute. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of December 16th, 2019. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. Happy holidays, everybody. Looking at the schedule, this will be the last Movie Draft Minute for 2019, but do not worry. We'll be back come January with more coverage of the draft. But until then, let's go check out the rankings one last time. I just realized something. This is the last time I have to say this. Brett Roundsville is in 6th place, still waiting for his first film. Jenny Josephson is in 5th place with $71.1 million. Brian Brushwood is in 4th place, $146.7 million. Wiggly League Mike is in 3rd place, $300.7 million. John Teasdale is in 2nd place, $467.2 million. And in 1st place, $530.1 million, it's Tom Merritt. And that is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of December 16th, 2019. So, Tom Merritt's at first place. Uh, Black Christmas, we were talking about this yesterday on Cord Killers. Uh, kind Buzz, of a fart. Yeah, Buzz not great. Buzz, Buzz out, shroud, sad. Sad, yeah. sad out loud. Sad. Fake news. Sad. <laughs> but but failing, you know, failing Black Christmas. Sad. Uh, the number one news item I've seen about his his heavy hitter, Cats, which I've long said, like, look, there's going to be a bunch of old people that want to explain this, you know, Broadway legend to their kids or whatever. Apparently, it's a little bit too sexually charged, and it's making a lot of people uncomfortable. Wait, it's not out yet, though. But they but, got the humanoid bodies that you can see in the trailers. Yeah, and, and, and reviewers have been seeing it, and, and sort of a universal... They got titties! Well, yes, but I think they're saying I was uncomfortable with how much I wanted to fuck a cat after watching Cats. Wait, was that not like part of the attraction I, I of the, the musical Cats? Gar Garfield, that was... I, mean, I, that I felt experience. that way after <laughs> reading Omni Magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold clip. on, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. wait. Hold on, clip. hold on, hold on, hold on. For real, though, wasn't the fact that you kind of wanted to fuck these cats not the point of the musical cats? I mean, I, I that think... That is the fourth song, is do you want to <laughs> yeah. fuck these cats? Yeah. <laughs> and then they go to the audience and sit in people's laps. Do you feel that you want to fuck these cats? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, 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 my guess is we're dealing with a sexual uncanny valley yep. where it's like we've got we've got sexy motions, we got sass, we got like, oh man, I, mean, I, I would get with that cat, and then you're confused, and then that makes you want to back away from it in a way that doesn't necessarily happen when everything's clearly a metaphor and you're wearing i don't know clown costumes on broadway no but they were dressed no, like that's... that on broadway yeah like, but, but, the but, exact but... same shit i'm willing to accept your general premise that people are uncomfortable 
by how sexual these cats are. But my only question is, is it because the general concept of sexy ass cats, which was part of the cats musical? No, 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 no it's, not it's at a all. CG, no, I'll say I have had. Uh, just a slew of wholesome sex with people in costumes on Broadway. And right. It was never an issue. <laughs> right, right. But, but because you they were add the uncanny on valley, side yes, of exactly. The uncanny you valley, add the right? CGI bit, and now I don't know what's happening. Right. right? They, Previously, but, uh, I knew it. Is it because they cast a bunch of very fuckable actors in these cat roles and then made them very, very, very realistically CGI cats that you're like, oh, no, I do want to fuck Jason Derulo. I do want to fuck Taylor Swift. I, I, like, I, I, is she I, one I of the cats? Think, yeah. yeah. Idris uh, that's going to confuse the hell out of me. In the words of Mr. Miyagi, uh, <clears throat> fuck a Broadway actor, safe. Fuck a person in cat costume, safe. Uh... Fuck a Broadway actor in cat costume made to look like actual case uh, or like actual cat sooner or later, just like AIDS. It's, 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 it's <laughs> that's what like he said. <laughs> just, just like grape is the lie. It doesn't matter. The, uh, the, the point is, it's, he didn't it's speak a cross. great English. It's fine. <laughs> no, look, it's a very old movie. <laughs> uh, so, wait, so now are you downgrading the cats thing? Well, it does. Uh, you you have been. I've, I've been very, a very, bullish. very loud, bullish proponent that like that the, cats the, is going like, to surprise and people, do very people well. People are going to go see Star Wars as much as they're going to do, but like non Star Wars people are going to go see cats, yeah. and then cats is going to have a long tail, pun intended. Uh. Yeah, but <laughs> it here's what concerns me. Thank is you, Bonnie. The hot take. I was hoping for if Cats was going to make all the money would be Cats captures the music of the Broadway legend. Instead, the hot take appears to be oh, I, I'm confused about wanting to fuck this cat, <laughs> which I'm going to guess is not the message they meant to put out there. I'm going to be out here saying I unironically want to fuck Taylor Swift cat. <laughs> Join me. <laughs> I'm at the head. I'm at the head of the parade. I'm, I'm leading. I got my baton. Come on. I'm, I don't know. Okay. It's, it's good that it's moving in an I, up I'm, and down. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the soundtrack and listen to it with an erection as opposed to watch it. That seems like the more prudent move. Is, is and, that, and, and then you're going to sternly look at your I think erection. that's Taylor Swift singing now, and I think she's of age, yeah. and she's probably a cat but not a CGI cat. Yeah. I'm going to maintain that. It's like the cat's version of the ice bucket challenge. Well, like, yes. Please listen while with an erection, and you'll be doing your part to make sure that cats are and fuckable. And then, then if it gets too up the uh, uh, too turgid, you're just gonna put on your pith hat again and say, <laughs> You stop it. <laughs> <laughs> too sexy, too much cat, not enough human. All right, I, to I the just real. I think we're gonna go, and the first thing you're gonna see is the cat crack. Like, you know, they're just gonna turn yeah. their, their weird Oh, uh, yeah, what if it was like a, a whole movie crack. of of them, cat. like, like yeah. someone wants to, cat. to pat them and they just keep putting their butt up next to them? Cat. Cat. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Cat crack is a one of a kind. You can see him smoke a crack up on a daily grind. R.I.P. El Gato Macho. Uh, <laughs> that song is actually from Evita. Rover Puck. Hey, uh, uh, Bryce, what do you say you matriculate us into the Diamond Club? Let's do that. Let's do that. Join us for drinks in the Diamond Club. Of course, as always, Club. not only this segment, but the entire Sounds freaking great. show brought to us our, by our friends over at Doghouse Systems. Doghouse Systems are the one who provided all the horsepower that keeps all of Diamond Club Studio alive, whether it's the live production, the live switching, or the behind-the-scenes post-production. Everything runs on Doghouse Systems. Sooner or later, you're going to need a desktop computer. You can keep us in business and say thank you for their amazing generosity of giving us a life online by going to doghousesystems.com slash V slash rogue. Use promo code rogue at checkout. Get yourself a free SSD. Do we have an email, and, Bryce? And, and by the way, uh, pursuant to our previous conversation, fuck a cat, get a doghouse. When you say fuck a cat, get a doghouse. <laughs> You, Thank okay, God. I just want to. Okay, yes, yeah. Get the dog Thank house. God they are not reviewing these ads. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some emails here into mail at nightattack.tv. That's the email address where you can read it. We got this one from Caleb. Caleb writes, 
my journey. So we, we've been asking people how they found Night Attack, uh, and they've been sending them in uh, over the weeks. Thank you so much, everybody, for that. We got one from Caleb who said, my journey started with the show uh, when Rev3 was being plugged on Twit. That's when I discovered Scam School. I went to Brian's website to learn more, and that's when I walked in on the middle of the Game Night episode of BB Live Show. Oh, wow. wow. I immediately realized that these are my people and instantly fell in love. Then the boys went to Twit, and I was so excited. Uh, that is, until Corey and Martin were guests, which led to some rules being implemented. My, my knee-jerk reaction was that the rules killed the magic and I left the show. Reminder, that was episode nine? Seven. Seven? Seven. Yeah, I know. That was early. That was uh, very uh, early. Uh, first of all, I, I remember the title of the episode was Hotel Rwanda for Dogs. Yep, that's right. <laughs> it was our movie review stuff where we brought in our friends who are legitimate professional movie reviewers, and we said, it's a very serious reward... Uh, it's a very serious award show. We want you to bring your thoughts about all the best movies of the year. And then we all talked about what our nominations were in various categories. And then at the end of it, I said, well, let's hope you win. And then we rolled dice. <laughs> and then announced that they didn't win. <laughs> they were unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were also told prior to that episode that we were supposed to be the uh, spicy part of the twit menu we were supposed to be uh the the explicit podcast amongst their offerings that was the first episode that would be given the explicit tag yes. you guys went into it knowing that right uh, and, and and we were given on the phone verbally we were yes, both there we were both uh, there. you know what the title of the show is nsfw it go ahead and curse yeah. Yeah, That's right. that episode, should you find it, <laughs> is remarkable because for the first 10 minutes, they're bleeping out goddamns. Yes. And, and then shits, and then, and, and certainly inwards. And then somewhere around minute 37, they just gave up. They just stopped. <laughs> they <living>. just, <laughs> And <laughs> big shout out to Tony, by the way. Big shout out to fucking Tony and Twin. Uh, uh, yeah, he he just gave up, and he should have because there were so many, and they literally told us to curse, and then they heard that episode, and they were like, "Oh my god, no!" <laughs> if that's what we were inviting onto our airwaves, god, it was a really fun show, though. It was like really, they were really great. Good. We had a great time. It was a good show. Good times. Although I'm glad that you are back. Welcome back. Yes. Thank many you. years, many years without maybe a second a second chance, but welcome back. Uh, well, you. let's to finish Caleb's letter here. I now regret this because I know I missed a lot of great stuff. A few years later, I randomly wondered whatever happened to Brian and Justin. I looked them up and saw that they had gone independent, just gone independent, by the way. Awesome. My first night attack show was the Corey and Martin episode. No! <laughs> Which one? Which one? There was a good one. The first one. Oh, no. <laughs> the episode nine, the group therapy where... Uh, oh, my God. You, wow. you guys got into a big fight on air. So, yes. Uh, yeah. No, that, uh, and, and for those... Mm -hmm. For the uninitiated, man, that led to some fundamental, really important institutional changes. We, we, we declared, like, we using various analogies, we had, like, an analogy war afterwards saying, like, eh, what happened? How did we end up with the worst episode we ever did where we melted down and fought live on air? Yeah. And I think Justin Which, won, by the way, in front of the two people... That we wanted most that we, to like, impress. Well, no, that also, you never want to melt down in front of... Because if you're going to look at two people who will never let you forget about it, Corey and Martin are among the two people. Because, by the way, I don't know if I have ever seen either Corey or Martin, either professionally or personally, in which they have not brought up, man, y'all fought. <laughs> 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 but what we realized, and it was your metaphor that and, I thought and, was the... And also, by the way, shout out to Double Toasted on Twitch right now. If you're watching us on Twitch. Oh, they are on Twitch? They're uh, fully right. on Twitch mm, right mm, now. Mm, 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 Big mm. shout out to them. In fact, we now that they're on Twitch, we have to make them part of the movie draft next time. Oh, hells yeah. Absolutely. But uh, it was you that came up with the analogy of uh, 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 basically a sports injury. What we tended to do up until then was at some point, you know, uh, there's a lot of jousting and sort of poking fun at each other. And maybe something stings a little bit extra. Yeah. We were basically doing the equivalent of tweaking our ankle and then refusing to tell the other person. Yes. And what that led to is a brittleness that when there was an injury, it was a full-on game. It was, it was, it was a... 
God. And like, I don't want to bring race into this, but like, it was the most like white boy, like <laughs> angry at each other fight in front of Corey and Martin who are like so precise about pointing out like racial differences. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so it's just a lot of like you, oh, I'm so mad at you. And me being like, I don't know what's going on. And they're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they were baby, baby Yoda gifting <laughs> with the yes. teeth. <laughs> they were just like, oh, okay, I'll sip on this tea for the next 10 nope, years. But I'll, I'll tell you this much like that, that ended up being like a seminal moment. It that was, I think was, it, it was, was, it, it was, it was, because, it was very because big. Yeah. since then, like we implemented strategies where no matter how small, the infraction was no matter how quickly either one of us shrugged it off it was a moral obligation that the other party report it after if not right after the show then the next day or whatever and so that we at least knew and i would say in in our era of everybody interacting with each other online which has less of a feeling than me and brian have over skype yeah it is a lesson that I would encourage for everybody. Like yeah. anytime that you think that you're just playing around with your friend, check in every once in a while. You don't always have to like check that's, in about that's that actually one thing. Why I came on your show tonight. Oh no, God. here it is. It. Here it is. Oh, okay. So uh, we were talking about Britney Spears, and I, I, I got nothing. I will leave it. <laughs> he opens up his his tweed jacket, and just cats go everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, you can't fuck them all. <laughs> Uh, we've also got one, we got one more letter here. This is from Greg. Greg writes, now that it's all over, can we please briefly give the floor to Jerry so he can tell us all why Watchmen is the best show ever made in the history of television and how it surpasses the quality of narrative and cultural relevancy of the original <laughs> comic book. Thank Hello, you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Brian Brushwood. I am the representative for one, Justin Robert Young. Uh, he would love to. Oh, my gosh. We were having this conversation, and Justin said, you know what I want to do? All I want to do is tell the world how Watchmen is the greatest show on television. But I reminded him that he's legally contracted by a verbal binding document, money exchanged hands, and he has been forbidden from ever speaking about Watchmen on the Night Attack program. <laughs> and he said he would love to talk $3 about it. $3 for, he said ah, 24 He, he just, just uh, he would love to talk there. about it, but he just can't. God, oh, oh contracts, gee, Hollywood. Urgh. What a, what a, what a bummer. You're going to talk about it? Okay, oh, guys, I've it just back. been he's fired. Uh -oh. This just in, press release. I've been fired Start as his alarm. representative. Woo, woo, woo. I have decided that I'm not going to yuck on anyone's yum when it comes to enjoying this obviously flawed <laughs> bullshit show. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you like it, congratulations. You like shitty television. <laughs> Go! You should enjoy it. Please feel free to run and frolic in your own opinions, but know that, I mean, we can leave it there. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think we've talked about this, but but I actually loved all of it except for the last episode. The last episode. Why didn't you like it? Uh, 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 there was a brief moment that I found myself thinking. I thought, are they going to do a bunch of superhero bullshit? Oh. And then I thought, why would I be surprised that a show called Watchmen would not do some superhero bullshit? Never well, realized. because the, the comic didn't do a ton of superhero bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Also, last I checked, uh, frozen shrimp falling from the sky did not poke, poke holes in bodies. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, wait. You think it was just uh, bullshit Deus Ex Machina because they wrote some dumb... Like stuff that they had to create dumb stuff to get out of it? No. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, maybe a, a show that built up the fact that there was a, a a white supremacist thing that ended with a black super god actually being killed in a cage. Is that super woke? I, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Because that's what a lot of people liked about it. How about this one? Uh, 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 how about the fact that uh, the entire premise of the show is built on the idea that the most interesting thing that you can do with a god is kill it. Andrew, 
Did you know that we won Best Comedy Podcast <laughs> at the Podcast Awards? Congratulations. It was amazing. Look, we got a look, trophy. Look, 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 look. <laughs> if you like this show, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> I would encourage everybody else to please read the iconic and amazing graphic novel by Alan Moore and David Gibbons, Watchmen, still one of the best stories ever told. In fact, it's the only time it's ever been exhibited in movies or television. I'm, I'm erasing all other versions of it. It's the only one. Follow my lead and read The Watchmen this week. Justin, would you say that The Watchmen graphic novel is as good or worse than The Fantastic Four? Which version? Of the I'm just trolling you to see the, the, the movie version that they made. Uh, oh, yeah, better. <laughs> okay, all right. That's my contribution. <laughs> I, I mean, liked I, it. I, 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 I chickless Fantastic Four. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I haven't seen The Watchmen. I read the. I read the novel, but I haven't seen any of the series yet. The whole shrimp falling from the sky thing really confused uh, me. Congratulations, oh, okay. you've already won. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I will rewatch the whole thing with you. Okay. I liked it I enough like that I'll rewatch it, it like, again. I how desperate Brian is. I don't get it because, like, Brian like cornered me. He's like, I didn't hey, corner he, you. He is, you know. Okay, you're right because I was already head on pillow trying to go to sleep. He goes, maybe we just watch ten minutes. I what said do you five think? minutes. I said, you, 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 you guys know how some, sometimes like cats or toddlers will put their hands underneath a door to try and get yes. you to. Brian will yeah. slip an iPad playing the Watchman under my door around two a.m. when I try to go cats. to sleep. It's been charged this episode. <laughs> but, uh, 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 Bonnie, like a Bonnie, 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 so 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 you saw that five or ten minutes. Right. What'd you think? Well, I stayed on not because I was interested, but I was hate watching. <laughs> and so then I had Bonnie, I've never felt closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I have this cat costume I'd like you to wear. <laughs> okay, now, not, not having seen this, I'm going to swing very hard pro Watchmen. It's one of the most brilliant and iconic series and of the we're time. Done. <laughs> thank you, Greg. Greg, thank you very much for your email. And everybody who's in emails, mail at nightattack.tv. That's where uh, you send it M A I L at nightattack.tv. That's where we read your letters at the end of the show which is what this is thank you hey man uh great time tonight what did we learn justin robert young well we learned that frozen shrimp shouldn't break God somebody's just... hand wait, 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 wait. we also learned that uh, uh bryce will never read another email involving any use of the letter w <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i learned that it doesn't matter how a dinosaur has sex as long as there's emotional intimacy and i learned that Taylor Swift makes a sexy cat. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, uh, I learned that Santa is under a sad witch hunt. No, dude. Are you kidding me? It's, it's Santa's at the top of his form, man. That dude. That dude's using HGH. I guarantee you. <laughs> that dude is swole and and thick. he's. I, I, I'm pretty sure you rip all that off. It's Kumail Nanjiani underneath all that. I'll bet you. I'll bet you, uh, folks. For you and yours, on this holiday season, I offer you a hearty See You Next Tuesday. Die in a fire of joy. And congratulations to our... It's Skills Cat with 9,369 bits. Thank you so much, Skills Cat, and everyone. It was all that cat fucking talk we did. Man, guess what, Skills Cat? We'll talk about fucking cats every single week. Thank you. Let's go. Night attack. Night attack, I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>